The equation for pressure is pressure is equal to force divided by area. In the SI system, force is measured in newtons. The best unit for measuring area is square meters, and therefore the unit for pressure is the force unit divided by the area unit, which is newtons per square meter. Now, we've given newtons per square meter a name. We call it a Pascal because it's much quicker to say. Now, a Pascal is a very small unit of pressure. If you can imagine a square meter, imagine you're looking at a table and hold your hands apart one meter, which is roughly three feet, and then one square meter would be three feet left and right by roughly three feet front and back. So one square meter, if you imagine a table, that's roughly the size of a card table. And an apple has a weight on Earth of about a newton. So if you took that apple and mushed it up and spread it uniformly over a card table, that's about a pressure of one Pascal. So it's not a very great pressure, which is why often whenever we use Pascals, typically we'll use kilopascals instead of just Pascals. You should know that whenever we're talking about gases, that standard pressure is one atmosphere of pressure, which is also equal to 360 millimeters of mercury, and of course a millimeter of mercury is also called a tor, named after Torricelli, who invented the barometer. So all of these are equivalent values for standard pressure. And whenever we're talking gases, standard temperature is considered to be zero degrees Celsius. That is 273 Kelvin. Now, whenever we get to things like acids and bases, standard temperature is considered to be 25 degrees Celsius. So try not to let that throw you. It's not my fault. I didn't come up with it. But with regard to gases, standard pressure is one atmosphere, or any of these others that I've listed and standard pressure is 273 Kelvin. A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. So here's a simple diagram of a barometer. We have a closed cylinder, closed at the top, open at the bottom, that's been inverted into a pool of mercury, and the air pressure pushes down on that surface of the mercury, and because there is nothing up here at the top of the barometer, some of that mercury is forced up. And the mercury will continue going up until the height of this mercury column, in effect, balances this downward air pressure. That is a mercury barometer. And you can see here a picture of an early mercury barometer and how the mercury column is supported by the atmospheric pressure. So the atmosphere is pressing down right there on the surface of the mercury and you can see the mercury column going up. You may have seen something that looks kind of like a clock that claims to measure air pressure and you might think well that's not a barometer. Um, well it is but it's not a mercury barometer it's what's called an aneroid barometer. And so you can see on the left here you can follow along an aneroid barometer contains a small pressure sensitive metal box that has been evacuated of air. The box is prevented from collapsing by being connected to a spring that is also attached to the dial on the barometer. When the air pressure on the walls of the box changes, the box flexes, which moves the spring and the dial. So that's not a mercury barometer, but it is a, an aneroid barometer, which also measures air pressure. Let's summarize pressure and barometers. One, the magnitude of a pressure is not merely due to the force that is applied. It is the ratio of the force applied to the area over which the force acts. And on the left side of the screen, in yellow, you can see the equation for pressure, force divided by area. Let's look at a couple of examples. In the middle of the screen here, let's say that the, the force is your weight, and you're wearing a pair of skis. Well, that downward force of your weight is being distributed over 
a rather large area because there are quite a few uh, square whatevers, square inches, square centimeters, square meters, if you will, that are touching the ground when you're wearing skis. So your weight divided by a very big area gives a rather small pressure. Now you take your skis off and you put on ice skates. You can see that your weight is the same. You see this, this what I've circled in blue here, that F and the one to the left of it are exactly the same size. But now your weight is being supported only by the edges of these ice skates, which means the area is much, much smaller. So while the force is the same, the area is much different, and when you take your weight and divide by a tiny, tiny area, you get a much bigger pressure. So this is why you could ski across uh, snow without necessarily falling into the snow. Let's say the snow is a foot deep. You could ski across the snow and you might be okay. You could never do that with ice skates because the pressure would be too great and you would sink right in. Okay, secondly, there are several common units for pressure. Atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, tor, pascals, kilopascals, bars. Uh, in common use still in the United States are pounds per square inch and um, weather people sometimes talk about inches of mercury. And thirdly, a barometer measures atmospheric pressure.